Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you know that I am in the middle of an epic battle with 8 inch floppy drives, which I need to repair to get my HP 9895A dual floppy disk units working again. I had gotten a whole bunch of them from a massive haul in LA a few years ago. Problem is, the reason I got so many drives is that they had all been taken out of service because they were faulty. In previous episodes, we wrangle with broken heads, broken belts, broken motors, and broken electronics. Helped by my friend's Antoine adapter, we were able to hook them up to a vintage PC, during which we discovered the 11 ways the early 8-inch floppies are different from any of the later PC floppies. Anyhow, we eventually prevailed and got a whole bunch of them back to working condition, at least when attached on a PC, good enough to boot from them and play a round of Donkey Kong. But these 8-inch drives are actually not HP. They are from Magnetic Peripherals, a subsidiary of CDC. And as it turns out, these drives were also used in another machine that is undergoing an epic restoration, the Centurion Mini Computer, on Usagi Electric's channel. And speaking of Usagi Electric, we're back with disk drives, floppy disk drive, 8 inch floppy disk drives, and Usagi Electric! Hello! And no, these ones are out of my HP equipment. And your computer uses that exact type of floppy? Uh, pretty much the Centurion used a CDC 9406, which is pretty much what this is. Uh, it has a faster seek time than the old Shugart drives that use the uh, kind of ball screw. Uh-huh. Um, so we had to actually modify the microcode on our floppy controller because all I had was the one with the older ball screw. So it would be nice to have one that has oh, a faster But, but that, that, that would be the original part that was in, yeah. in your device. Turns out David was in California for professional reasons. So we swung by for a visit, during which I arranged a special meeting at the Computer History Museum for him to inspect our two Bendix G15s tube computers, of which he's also restoring one. And he participated to the general mayhem in our lab. <laughs> okay, we got the Japanese songs from the moon. And of course, also, we wanted to prepare a floppy drive for a centurion. But before we get there, we have a little bit of unfinished business. We have to repair the broken actuator brake correctly, and also realign the drive with an alignment disk this time, since we finally got hold of one thanks to a viewer's donation. Thank you, Jeff. You are awesome. But let's start with a little bit of flashback from a couple of weeks before. Flashback. So we have a new box from our favorite sponsor, PCBWay. And that's the first time I'm trying this. I got some 3D printed parts. Eric, these are actually yours. You did the design. They're the champion of swag. <laughs> I think I got another of the pants. as them for a pad. It's like I worked at. Yeah. But what we want to look at is uh, the reproduction of the brake here that was uh, breaking the motor in the uh, disk drive. Wait, you're telling me that the brake broke? The, the brake broke. They have so many versions of uh, materials. I chose two and they are both SLA prints. That will work. So here's one and your other one is. You, you did print one, which was with a regular thing. How do you call extrusion? Yes. And this one is SLA. Then I tried all my friends to print SLA, and of course they could, but they never have the time. I say, what an idiot. I just can buy them on PCB. Why they do that too? One is nylon, I think. This is nylon. And now I remember that one's called like pale grass or something like that, because it's sort of that very pale green color. And this one, so those are material that you can make functional parts with. So easy to order and it's, you know, the problem with 3D printing is that you can do your own but it takes, you have to babysit your printer and I didn't want to do that. There you go. Look at that. I think it's gonna work. 
it came back zero effort on my part uh, it's a few bucks a piece among the swag was also one of their SLA prints in transparent material they have like maybe 15 materials or something like that so wouldn't you know it PCB way offers more than PCBs I keep forgetting about it they also offer 3D prints. Just click on 3D parts and voila, you can get them printed and you order them just like you order a PCB. Uh, upload your file, let's say we want 10 of them and get an instant quote. Then you have a plethora of materials to choose from. I chose UTR8220. They give you a little explanation of what that is. This is perfect for a high precision SLA print that will also be quite tough. Pretty cheap too, about $1.20 a piece. I also made one out of nylon using this advanced but more expensive black material. But wait, you can also make it out of aluminum, stainless steel, titanium? What? Titanium? Let's go for it. Oh, oops, maybe not that price. But it can be done. Let's choose a more common material and then you just press order and off it goes. Your parts come through the mail, all finished and ready to go. End of flashback. It would be nice to have one that has oh, a but, but that, that, that would be the original part that was in, yeah. in your device. But before, before we go and do that, uh, we have to change the part that I had, I had made up a, a brake part is a part that's inside this motor that always splits into two and uh, I had some new ones printed by PCB way two materials uh, that's some super tough tough plastic and that's some nylon you have a favorite one that you think would work Eric yeah, I'd probably go with the higher strength yeah. one to approximate uh, the original. This one. So the first step is to take the pulley off. And of course that, no, nar lime is screwed, right? We are oh, yeah. And then you do this. Ooh. The stepper motor is built by, it says Clifton Industries, but it's using the same logo as the Litton stuff. So my oh, really? that it's a generic, it's just a generic stepper motor and they just machined out what screws they needed. But yeah, that's the same. That's the same logo as the Litton mini computer. Okay, wow. let, let go. Let go. What's hanging up there? Come on, let go. Ah. Is it the band? So no no cursing on camera. <laughs> no cursing on camera. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold on a second. There's something mind. mechanically not working, so I have to do that off camera. A few non-cursing minutes later. So we got the motor out and I'm going to, I guess, remove my, my, my beautiful job. <laughs> there you go. So it goes like this. Yeah, that's it. I think it will work. And then we have the famous spring. So we'll get the spring back. And we got to hook it up. Okay, careful with your eyes. I have glasses, so I'm, I have safety squints. And that's the how strong spring. There we go. That's a lot. Mr. Usagi, you got a break. Hooray. Get a feel of it. It's only slightly stronger than your wood concoction. Oh, okay, so you just yeah, I was you just the tasted it, tested it before. Yeah. If that doesn't work, when we have the more slippery yeah. um, uh, nylon version, that's why I made two. Okay, let's see if we can put it back together. More moments later. So we have it under Omni Disk Control, and um, now if I do seek. Where is it? For you, go in the middle. It makes a better noise than before. It sounds so good. The brake did something. Seek so zero. Good. 
Oh yes, it's so much more civilized. 677. Okay, so I, I think my friend, we just realign it. Uh, the, the <laughs> Not yet, we have to realign oh it God, really and, and, and see if we have so messed up. Well, we have messed up the alignment for sure and see if, if we can realign it. But I know that this, the electronics work, so yes. that should be good. So first we are going to try realignment with a regular diskette, which is the method I have used so far. Okay, uh, this, is, this is the exam. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing is to put the probe so you can capture the signal. You got some test points right here. Somewhere, yeah. Let me let me zoom on it on it before you start. Right, check out the. Uh, so you can you can put that on. The schematic for which test points we care we care about. Well, actually, all of those work, uh, but it's the so it's the output of the amplifier that's ground at the bottom, and then okay. the, 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 and any of them, the one at the top is the one I use generally. Okay. So that's ground at the bottom and. Any of the four, I think, gives you some kind of a signal. So that's going to give us our read signal, and uh, it's nice that we can also index it. So at the back, I have a little pin on the connector that says index. If you look at over here, <laughs> and it's already done it's for you. You made it super easy. Right, so that's, that's on um, Antoine's. adapter and I've located the index pin. All right. But there is a little subtlety with that one is that you only get index pulses when this is selected. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not. So then you should be set up. So then we need power um, and a disc. You need power and a disc and before that you need to make sure you have control of your, you need to take control of your disc. And for that we use OmniDisc. So you do CD Omnidisc and then you go Omnidisc. All right. There we go. And so we should gain control of our drive now, mostly for seeking to specific positions. Uh, so if you do, it's on B, so this is uh, drive one. You just type drive one, drive space one. Okay, and then put it on drive one. Okay. And then uh, cylinder 77, because it, this has only 77 cylinders. So 77. If you do map on, on this one. Map on, okay. And now, if you do seek 40 and wait a while, you should seek to 40. Mm. Nope. There you go, it did. There it goes. Seek zero. Okay, do a seek somewhere. There you go. Seeking beyond cylinders. I should have seeked the oh. 76. All right. Next, you put the disc in. Doesn't matter. Okay, work this time. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah, worked. And give it a spin with the AC. There's, there's no control, the motor is always on. Okay, there we go. Seek. So we should see the index pulse up here. Okay. And then I see almost one, no zero, signal. Zero. So if I seek to zero one, there's our index uh, pulses. Okay. At zero one, we got uh, zero and you get you got track two. So you're on zero, you were probably past the track. Yeah. Okay, so now what you have to do is go back to seek zero. Yeah, seek back to zero zero. Loosen okay. it up and adjust it until it looks like we're getting data. And for that, you just take the. It's, it's hard to film. It's, it's the pulley screw up. There you go. So you. you so if I go okay. that way. Yes. We're nothing. If I go this way, we can see the amplitude come up. Go down, okay. there's track so, one. So we have track one, and then you go back to track and zero. There's track zero, and then, and then nothing, the right? So, so you, you go... You adjust it to maximum amplitude. Yeah, except when you will clamp it, it will go one direction or another, so you have kind of pre-adjust for that, you'll feel it. Oh, that's what you're saying. So, okay, see which way it goes when I clamp. 
and you don't need to be exact because we are going to do it with the screws of the we are going to do a fine later on all right okay so now you have a track we hope it's track zero yeah and then what you want to do is wiggle the thing by hand put it back around this way here okay yeah we could do it that way so there you go a better shot with the camera just crack this goes to open yeah and it's not a delicate adjustment at all it's very easy to do Okay. That's maybe too far. Yes, a clean one. That's right probably about it. There. Yeah. And usually track zero looks a little different, so if you do seek one, we should see a different track. Yeah, you see, okay, it looks like okay. you're, you're getting a uh, it's because I'm not triggering properly. Let me get you out of trouble here. So if you do this now is going to okay. trigger only when you seek to it so we go back to track zero there you go and, and you see how zero is looks slightly different than do seek one there you go yeah uh, well do, do seek 40 something in the middle see if you end up in the track okay so it looks like that's the, no, that's the rough alignment I do when you don't have an alignment disc. So thanks to a viewer, I have an alignment disc, so we could try that maybe on our next disc. But this one, you should exit uh, quit and then see if you can read the disc. You just B. There you go. Do it there. There, there you go. go. You read it and uh, go to CD Kong. Let's see if you can play Donkey Kong. So Donkey Kong takes the whole disc, so it will... Uh, C Kong. Oh. But C Kong? Yeah, it's a, it's a special version. I, mean, I should probably just do a directory listing and figure right, it out for right. myself, but... <laughs> and now it's reading the game. I think you have a good disc that you have aligned yourself. We'll see. That was easy peasy. Look at that. Champ programming. Yes, it's Champ Kong, that's what they call it. Ah, that's why it says C Kong. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. That's really cool that you can see the different amplitudes depending on what track you're on. Okay, I think you have realigned your disc. So it's not really tough once you figure out where the. What took me like. Super easy. 15 minutes is to figure out uh, how to repair the disc yeah. and where to find where to attach the probes which I hadn't written down and oh maybe escape and start game there you go there we go hey here's, uh, here's Donkey Kong taking the princess away okay so Alright, so I think if it if it can do Donkey Kong, it should be able to do Centurion, right? Yes, <laughs> I, think, I think we're good. <laughs> Alright. So now that we have done it the wrong way, we're going to try to do it the right way because <laughs> thanks to viewer Jeff, a gift from Fairtronics, that's his website, we got an actual alignment disc. And I have not used one yet on this type of discs. And it says that it has a cat eye pattern at track 38. That's the ticket. Alright, so let's try this. Look. Look, give me 24 volts and 5 volts. Okay. Okay, and let's go back into our regular mode here. So if I seek to 38, yeah. there's our cat's eye. We have cats. Um, oh, and one, one thing we have to do to, to sync it is um, 
since we lose the sync pulses, the index pulses when the disc is not addressed, you figured out that we could get it from so like one secret here. pin. Yeah, well, it's not really a secret pin. The schematic here index is coming out at the end here. I just went back a little bit further. U19 pin 10 is coming out of this uh, uh, monostable multivibrator here. Um, so we should be able to get an index pin that is not jaded by drive select if we go on that pin. Right, so because that's the drive select gating, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so that, that's done so that's different discs right don't all spew their index pulse at the same time, so they only do it when they are selected, but that's annoying when you test so the disc. Let's seek back to track zero here. And we will turn off our 24 volts and our 5 volts. We'll disconnect to you. And then U19 was U, that's pin 9, pin 10. So right. now if we turn 5 volts on, 24 volts on. Yeah, we then do we get the pulse all the time. Pulse already. Right. That's excellent news. So if we go seek to track 38, we should get a synced cat's eye okay. pattern on there. And then your and cat's eye is not balanced, so to balance it perfectly. So if you balance it perfectly, we should have the Let's see if we can get that done. And then crack these two little guys loose here. Should be able to. Oh, it's less catsy. Actually, we were pretty close then. Yeah, we weren't far off, huh? No. Ah, you're onto Let's something. There. Let me put a little more tension on these bolts so that I have a little bit finer grain control, maybe. Ooh, ooh. Get That's where we were. How do they want their cat's eye pattern? Did it, did it tell us? It needs to be balanced. That's what I thought it would be. But it has to go through zero. I think that doesn't count where you are now. Yeah. That's not good. That's perfect. So I think we were yeah. almost... We were really we, close. We were close enough. It's really hard to get it. You, there you go. Right there. You can get it a little bit better. So we were just yeah. very, very, very close with the rough alignment. That's not a perfect cat's eye pattern, but I think that is close enough to be good. Actually, we are too hard on ourselves. That's how it's supposed to look, with one wide eye and a narrower eye of the same amplitude. So we're just perfect. All right, uh, okay, so that's, thank you, Jeff, for the disc. That was awesome. Uh, but you can also do it without the disc. if if you have a disc formatted. If you have a, yeah, if you have a known good data disc, you can totally use that. Instead. Right, uh, that data is forma yeah. formatted in a, in a good drive, right? That will yep. get you close enough. All right. So Usaki Electric flew back home to Texas with a good 8-inch diskette drive and a few other goodies. His video of the disk drive installation are just out, but it did not go without some hiccups. So go see the rest of the story on his channel, it's all linked in the doodly doo of course. And I'll see you in the next episode. Oh wait, the bunnies! We almost forgot the bunnies. Because I have some too, mine are more like 5 and a quarter inch bunnies, while Usagi Electric appears to have an 8 inch bunny. But it's all the same cuteness. So now, see you in the next episode.